welcome back to. Okay, the queen said. Go <laughs>
past the enemy of my inner me and still finds me worthy to be used for his glory to share his message and love and hope with the world. Listen. Listen. You can act it out. You can drop mic on that. But wait. There is more. There is more. There is more. There is more. Jackie is an author, as I just mentioned, y'all. Yeah. We're gonna get all up into her business. She is a part of an amazing anthology of about what twelve women all together. Mm -hmm. Twelve mm -hmm. amazing, incredible women that talked about when your destiny needs a divine intervention. Ah, what that'll preach. Don't oh, nobody steal that title for their sermon. <laughs> She's gonna talk about her particular chapter, which talks about the imposter. Mm -hmm. The imposter identity. The imposter identity. So we are so excited about that. She also has these amazing minute tickets. You got 10 minutes to get all that that God's trying to get to you. So in 10 minutes, we're going to need you to go get it. She'll tell us more about that, too. And if y'all have not heard, which some of you I know have, she has such an amazing music ministry. Her CD is called Broken But Perfected for My Purpose. I was blessed to be oh, witness to a lot of them songs being written. Mm -hmm. Baby, come from blood and sweat. That part, and then later on, we're gonna have the link up for you all to order her book because her book is not available, and you're gonna wanna get it. You're gonna wanna get it. And listen, the other beauty that sits next to me on the right. I would you like to <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what y'all been drinking? <laughs> She has certification in ministry and leadership and is a certified resilience certified resilience trainer, author, and speaker as an overcomer of childhood sexual abuse and mental health illnesses. She is known for her devotion in spreading awareness to others. Carla offers support and guidance to those who are dealing with similar issues as well as the pains and pressures of <laughs> when life be life and day to day life. Carla is founder and creator of Radiate her H E R. We'll talk to us about that acronym too. L O C, an initiative created to inspire women to live resiliently through their own healing journey. She often shares her own authentic stories of overcoming life's disastrous. Come through because life can be like that moment. She has co-authored two published books called The Brilliant Awakening and Anthrology that shares 20 stories of hope and healing from everyday sheroes and The Brilliant Awakening 2.0. She has also been published in other written works and her voice can be heard on her popular podcast, Her H-E-R Talks Radio. Carla also has recently opened her new business. I cannot wait for y'all to hear about Coco Beans Coffee, a family-owned, veteran-owned coffee business. Coco Beans Coffee Mission is and always will be the advancement of the coffee palette and to advocate for the enrichment of conversations that we have with the world, with each other, and ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Miss Carla Chapman, aka KC. <laughs> I hold in my hand this amazing book that I was just telling you guys about, and it is called An Anthology of Twelve Extraordinary Women Living Ordinary Lives, Lives Until Destiny Intervened. When your destiny needs some help or some intervention, Jackie. Yes, yes let's yes. talk about it. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's talk about this book. First of all, where were you in your life? when you were called and assigned to be in this book and then approached, before we get to your chapter, like where were you in your life when this happened? Um, I, I, was at, I was at a place where I was struggling, trying to figure out where was I supposed to be? What was I supposed to be doing in my life? Because I had made these great plans and just seemed like none of that was Ooh. working. Ooh. None of And I found myself winning where God had me, but it's not where I wanted to be. And so I'm sitting there, like, feeling like a, an absolute failure, feeling like I'm just a, a no good, I'm a damaged good to this world, and what is the purpose of living if I can't do what I set, set out and design for my life? 
And so I'm, I'm feeling this way. I, I got with Dr. Shana, Shana Lewis, and she's a great um, life coach and, and strategist. She works with business as well. And so I was taking some of her, um, some of her uh, sessions. And so from overwhelmed to overcomer, and I mean, I'm doing all this, I'm grasping for straw, trying to figure out, God, maybe if I'm in this program, the light bulb will go off and I'll get it, and I'll be able to run again like with the zeal that I had in my early 20s when I knew things were mapped out for me. But, and so I hear that she had a volume one, I'm in volume two, so this is volume two that you're looking at. And so these ladies had come, I was in a book club and I heard them telling their stories, sharing their stories a bit about some horrendous things, abuse and just uh, codependency and, you know, lots of different things. I'm thinking life shattering things. And so I was like, I was so inspired and I grabbed nuggets from each and every one of their stories. And I remember saying at the end of it, because Dr. Shana had challenged us. At, to grab onto the story that really um, speaks to you so you can help uh, give words of encouragement to that author at the end. But me and the way that I've been wired because of past experiences, I wanted to tell each author something mm-hmm. because I was just afraid that if one, if somebody didn't grab on to that person's story, maybe it would have affected them and they didn't think what they had to say was important. So I, I grabbed onto all 10 or 12, whatever, however many she had in volume one, and I gave them a little nugget of what I got out of every one of their stories. And at the end, I just said, hmm, y'all make me feel like I might have something to tell. I might have a story to tell. Okay. And that went to the atmosphere. God heard that. And so about two, three months later, here comes Dr. Shane. I'm doing volume two. I'm looking for women who have stories about when God stepped in and their destiny needed an intervention. And so it was like God pushed me in the back and said, hey, hey, little girl, remember when you said that a couple months ago? And I was like, oh, no, God, I ain't got no story. Nobody else. I I don't know what you're talking about. And he said, yeah, I want you to entertain this. So I listened to the entertain, you know, and listened to the information session. Then I said, okay, then when I heard some some of the rates of what it cost to do this, I said, oh, Lord, I know. That's what I know. I like, man, you're going to do this and you're going to invest in yourself. Yeah. Right? Same way you've been going out investing in all these people running today, a little something. Yeah. You're going to invest in yourself. Yeah. I said, well, God, what do I talk about? What do I say? So I made the investment. He still didn't answer me on what I'm talking about. I get in there and I'm thinking, okay, well, what kind of story? I'm trying to think of something cute, you know, surface, <laughs> surface-wise. Yeah. And then we had a wonderful coach, Crystal Cunningham. Shout out to Crystal. She's an amazing, like, she'll pull the story out of you. She'll choke it out of you. But anyway, <laughs> and so I kept giving her these things. She was like, no, nah, that ain't it. Yeah. God said, that ain't it. And so we do prayer, fasting, and whatever. And then we start talking about, God was like, you going to tell them about how. I called you to do something, but you hated, but you went in it. I said, oh, I don't know why you want to hear about that. Nobody wants to hear about that. And so finally, before I could even tell them the idea that what he told me, they had to, I was the last person to speak because everybody else was giving their stories and I'm still moaning with what am I going to say? And I couldn't even get two sentences out of my mouth mm-hmm. before I literally broke down yes. and they had to pray me through. Mm-hmm. They said, our oh, high God is working with yeah. what you're supposed to say in this book. Right. And so at one time I said, well, call it damaged goods. And they said, oh, no, we will beat that. And they see, I have a song on that. I don't want to let you do that again. You already no, got that. I have a song on the album yeah. called Damaged Goods mm-hmm. because that's how I, I walked around feeling in this world. Mm-hmm. Like I was a damaged good that nobody wanted. Saw it sitting on the shelf, but they passed it by for everything else because I'm listening to what people yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. You know, forgot about what he said. So she said, no, nah, we're not calling it damaged goods. Try again. And so then I start talking and telling the story. The guy was like, imposter, I believe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. And he gave, when you get the book, you'll see, or if you saw the, the picture of how it spelled. Mm-hmm. Now, I didn't get it. I didn't oh, get it till later. It on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, but there are some letters that are capital, some that are lowercase with period. And I said, okay, what does this mean? He said, he said, look at it and look at how it is. Because he posts, if you know anything about acronyms and stuff in the medical field, post after. Mm-hmm. I said, when I looked at it, capital I, I'm after her identity. Woo! Jeez! Oh, I looked at it, I said, okay. Ah. I said, okay. And so it started 
to make sense about this war that goes on. See, people on the outside, they see it all cute because, yeah, I'm yes. not sure I tried to hide it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I tried to put on a mask. And, yeah. uh, and again, if you've ever been to a masquerade, you don't see the true identity of the person behind, but you can still admire the mask mm -hmm. that they wear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to put on these masks in every arena that I was in, dancing to be what people needed me to be, but feeling so unfulfilled. Yeah. yeah. So much so that the mask became who I thought I was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know my true identity anymore. I forgot what he said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, God. So where are we going with this time after her identity? He said, because see, the, the world makes fun of it and puts the little angel here mm -hmm. and puts the little devil here. But really in your spirit, that's what's happening. Yeah, it's yeah. a real war. Well, over it's here, you're war. hearing you pain. You're going yeah. through opposition. Yeah. You're going through suffering. You're going through trauma. Mm -hmm. that's, that's part of that acronym, P-O-S-T. He said, but over here, I'm trying to give you purpose and prosperity. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to give you optimism mm -hmm. and a future. I'm trying to give you success. I'm trying to make you triumphant, but what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And so every day I'm mulling through this. Yeah. And I, I, I found that God delivered me in a place where I said I would never be. And that was in the classroom working yeah. with kids. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. If you know, you know. <laughs> Jackie, it was a whole allergic. <laughs> I ain't trying to even. And, Honestly, I used to always tell you, your ministry gonna be right there too. That that you be working, she be like, God know better because I don't like no kids. She's the most amazing person when it comes to kids. That very thing that you run from the most is where you, the way you are with children, and they, I don't care where we would go, kids was always gravitating to this woman, and they be like, hey baby. <laughs> Everybody don't have that. Everybody that teach and work with kids, they, they do it for paycheck. Yeah. Am I lying? That's, true. True. That's what a paycheck. That's a special type of love and anointing. Very true. To be full with other people's children and what they be going through. So what you have is amazing. You get to pour all them years of what you've gone through into them at, at the age where they're developing their yes. identity. Because that's what mm -hmm. a lot of us lost. Mm -hmm. Our identity mm -hmm. is yeah. during those years of when we were younger. And then he had that strategy, that tactic against our lives. He mm -hmm. tried to come by way of sexual abuse. He tried to come yes. by way of abandonment, addiction, all kind of different ways. And you're at that age with them where you can pour into them mm -hmm. about their identity. So, so very, very proud of you. I know we got a bunch of questions and a bunch of things we want to say. I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. And you were talking about, you know, going through that process. I want to know what the process was like as you were writing your story. Because I know just from experience when we get that title, we know what we want to write, but we've never dove into it. So it's like God is doing the hard work at that same time. Mm -hmm. yes. So what was it like for you? It was another battle. It was another battle that I had to fight because there were parts... I didn't want to tell. Right. I didn't want to. How do you tell people? And here's some. Oh God. Okay. So yeah, let's backtrack because I've had people look. I had people look at and read the story. Educators and you know just lay people who went back and read the story. And one of the things, God not only blessed me, but He blessed me to thrive in that environment. Because no matter what I was feeling and how much I said I hated it on the drive there, soon as my feet got out, that part. Mm -hmm. Uh, onto that pavement, I knew that I need to push all that aside yes. because I did not want to be another harmful factor for right, those kids. Yes. Right, right. Because I told you guys, words matter to yes. me. They were, because you were talking about the age where they're forming their identity, figuring out, yes, and about this age, maybe younger, <laughs> and I, I would say, yeah, definitely younger, but this age, it was solidified for me when I began to lose my identity. Right. And again, I, I was sheltered. I didn't come up in the home where I didn't have the people around me because I have a great mother and father who were around me. I had, you know, military upbringing, so you have the structure, you have the moms. I mean, it was just like everything for me, so I felt like I wasn't supposed to be going through right. this. Why am I feeling this? Because that you hear those stories with broken homes right. or broken right. families. And so, again, that's that entitlement feeling. No, right. you're not above going through anything. Right. Right. Help somebody yeah. with that. So then I'm sitting there writing this stuff, 
And I'm like, God, I don't want people to know this. How do you go tell them, well, yeah, I hated it, but I won teacher of the year not once or twice. And I'm sitting up there hating getting an award because it wasn't what, where I wanted to get it. I thought I was going to be this great surgeon. I thought I was going to be this heart doctor, working on people's hearts, fixing them, and, and see what God showed me. I can't let you do that. Because you, dear, even though you said you were going to be a doctor from this age, your heart was always in the wrong place to do that. Let's back up. Right? Let's back up. That's what I was about to say. So, I'm already. I want to take you back. I want to take you back. Take me back. Take me back. Give it again. 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 Hold on. Hold on. Wait a second. Wait a second. Hold on. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. There it goes. There it is. There it goes. You felt it too. Mm -hmm. When you stop fighting, the tissue right there. Okay. So I want to take you back. Oh. So here's what people don't know. This is going to be important to your process. It's that having to do things that you don't want to do and you don't understand why God got you doing it. Jack, do you remember? Give me your hand. I'm going to take you there. Do you remember all them times you had to go do substitute teaching and you hated it? <laughs> she could not understand. what, And it was like no matter what Jack tried to do, she kept having to go do substitute teaching. And I remember days talking to her. She'd be driving. And it was almost like you are driving to the most dreaded place ever, wondering, God, what are you doing? Mind you, she's writing amazing songs. We're out there ministering on stage. It's just like you pouring to everybody else. Can I get that pour in I've been asking about? And you got to go drive to this job that you hate. Jackie for years, but she would faithfully do it. Yeah. She would faithfully do it. She would go and do a substitute teaching and probably be the whole time like, when is that bell going to ring? Yeah. But Jackie <laughs> would go faithfully do it. And she did this for years. But stay faithful. But she stayed very, very faithful to the call of God in her life in other areas. Meanwhile, God was not moving in the timing or in the way that she thought or wanted to, but she kept being faithful. Not knowing that all of that was to build up, taking that heart doctor, that cardiologist, that spiritual cardiologist through her medical school training. She had to go through this training. She had to go through these times for where she is right now. How many of us? Are you losing our identity because this is what I want to do. But God, why are you going to be doing this? How many years am I going to do this? You told me to start the business. I've done everything and I don't have a customer. We don't have no money coming in. We're losing money. How many of us are losing ourselves even in that part? Even in that part. So, Jackie, I want you to talk about that. How was that all of those years? having all of these dreams, all these aspirations, writing about what was in your heart, but having to live differently because that was the direction God was taking you. Mm -hmm. Did you have moments where you felt like, okay, God, <laughs> maybe me and you just ain't. I had many. I had many. And once you'll see my story, a lot of it centered around the conversation we had. And I couldn't come to him with the mask and be cute. Or if I did, he saw right through it. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. So I was, and, and so somebody said, well, how did you feel? I was angry. I was upset. Because I didn't have the fun that kids normally have in school. Because I was studying the science. I was studying the biology. I was studying the anatomy. I was making the grade. Yeah. I, I said to the atmosphere, God, I don't want to be a valedictorian. So what did he do? He moved me to Oklahoma. <laughs> You made me the valedictorian up there. And I was just like, God, okay. But I hated the move to Oklahoma. <laughs> I didn't want to move. And he was like, I'm moving you there because you won't get it in San Antonio. Yeah. That's one of the reasons you won't get it there. And so he blessed me with that. But then I'm like, okay, but God, that's not enough. <clears throat> See, it seemed like everything I was grabbing for was not enough. <clears throat> so then I start working. I get the biology degree. And I start working in the hospital. Listen, I'm a unit clerk, and if you know about the hospitals, the unit clerks write down what happens in the charts and what the doctors are supposed to do and what right. meds and stuff. I got in with the surgeons, the heart surgeons, because I was working on a cardiac floor, 6 South over at Methodist. And um, I was like, surgeons, I'm going to school, I'm going to be a surgeon, and whatever. I said, can, can y'all just let me shout? That is unheard of. Mm -hmm. I kept asking them to one doctor, broke down and said, 
put the put the uh, folder <laughs> over there and you go scrub in. And I said, but they don't fire me. He said, don't worry about them firing you. You go scrub in. And so here I am supposed to be unit clerking, but I'm scrubbing in <laughs> under the surgeon's wing. And so I'm thinking, oh, God, this is good. This is good. Then the more I started working in there, the more I started not liking this, this field that I had chosen. I said, oh, no, God, I can't turn around. What am I going to say? I've been telling people since I was little, <laughs> I'm going to be a doctor. I got to save face now. Right. And so, but it seemed like every day I would go, the more and more I couldn't stand it. And I remember one, one incident very clearly we, we, that we were taking the monitors off a man who was leaving. He was leaving. He had gotten his surgery. His heart was getting better. Wife and daughter were there. And they said, oh, he, he sent him downstairs. Go get the car. We're, we're sending this stuff out. So he go home. The mom and daughter went downstairs. Next thing we hear is cold blue in that man's room. He died before they bought the car. Jesus. And I said, God, I cannot, with the way my heart is and the way I'm feeling and the reason, so let me back, let me just uncover that for you. He told me, I can't let you be the heart surgeon because you only want to be one because you felt like people rejected you. So you wanted to pick a profession where whether they like you or not, Jesus, they, they don't, don't need you. Accept you because they, they don't need you. you. My God. And that was going to give you the validation that you felt you needed. And then it would have turned into a God complex. There you go. Thank and you. I won't have another one thinking there are God before. Jesus. So I said, God, you, you are absolutely right. Because though I had the love of my parents and family, it wasn't enough. I wanted people outside yeah. to see that there was something. Yeah, yes. and they did it. And so I remember when I remember it very clearly because he took me back on this writing experience to answer your question. He said, Remember when you was little and you had some kind of assignment? First of all, the teacher asked you to look up your name and what did it mean? Kids were saying, Oh, my name is Joy. My name is this. I looked up Jackie, the Jack woman. And the root of it said, Go back to Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> But, Jesus, but here's the, what? Here's the part I latched on to. Come on. Jacob meant supplanter. So what is supplanter? Wow. One who takes from someone else. Wow. And I turned that negative connotation. I never want to tell people what my name meant because I thought people would always think I'm there to take something oh, from them. Oh, Jesus. So as a kid, I'm going through life thinking this. That was the first false identity I put on. Yeah, yeah. So then, oh God, I uh, So then, like I told you, I, put, I, I felt always rejected. And when the third person, if you catch the last episode, we talked about how it was when two were there, two friends. Right. But then when another came, that rejection automatically right. came. So then I had the assignment, what do you want to be when you grow up? So I started looking at prestige. What are things society says ooh about when you say, when you're a lawyer, yeah. when you're a doctor? Yeah. When you judge those kind of things, they say ooh, and they say ooh, they they give get they give weight and value to those. So I said I want to do that. Then you start looking at the pay rate, and you gave value because society yeah, gave value. Right. So that's when you plan it in your little heart. Yeah, you want to be a doctor. Yeah. So you pursued it. Not let you. I let you. Mm. <laughs> they said I let you. But all along, I had a plan. Many other plans in a man's heart. There you right. go. But it's God's purpose. purpose. He said, now think back. All throughout your life, you've been a church baby. And you've been teaching the ones younger than you. He said, but you 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 hating this teaching, but it's lace all over you. Yeah. Can I divine in the picture for a moment? Yeah, divine Let's go back to your name. <laughs> oh, Jacob. Yeah. Let's go back to your okay. name, Jacob. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is Jacob known for? That duality uh -huh. of Jacob and Israel. Yeah. yeah. It's the Jacob and Israel. It is. It's the destined and it's the human. It's the, I know God and I'm anointed and it's the human. Mm -hmm. And since I've known you, that's been a struggle. That's something we all talked about because mm -hmm. all of us were struggling with that a lot, remember? Mm -hmm. That was also Jacob's struggle with, with, with an identity. Mm -hmm. This was part of your divine purpose, mm -hmm. which is why your ministry is called. They don't know this. Your divine, your divine purpose <laughs> ministry, that's been there. That was a year. Years years of the book. <laughs> all of this was divine. Even the name of all of it was divine. Even him telling you, no, you're not going to do that much good. That was that season. Mm -hmm. That was the ministry. 
even when exactly. I fought with the producers, when they were talking about what's the title of the album, I said, oh, God told me it's broken, but perfected yep. for my purpose. Yep. I don't care how long it is. Yep. That's what he told me. Yep. And that's what we're going to put down on the mm -hmm. CD. Mm -hmm. All of it was <laughs> Yeah, all of Every it. Every <laughs> last purpose of it. And all these I've known y'all never knew that Jacob was part of the derivative of your yeah. name. But that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot of sense. And so even these struggles mm -hmm. you've gone through <laughs> with your Jacob and your Israel inwardly, even those inner wars mm -hmm. have been part of your divine purpose. Because mm -hmm. the way this is written and the way you ministered, have ministered, four years will continue to minister. Mm -hmm. None of that could have happened if you had to go through that. None of it. No. And those internal battles, I'm telling you, and see, the, the depression is, it hits my family strong. Mm -hmm. Grandmother got sick and, and thought she wasn't going to make it. A few months later, she was gone. Yeah. I told you that spirit tried to creep on my mom. Yes. 12 yes. years in the house, not wanting to talk to anybody and communicate with the outside world. Yeah. And God told me, if you don't fight it, you're going to be the one that's, they're going to be talking about she took her life. As many days, it was so strong, and it seems so little to some people. But when you think you're called to do something else, and you're working for it, you're investing, you're doing everything you can to reach all of these straws, they don't understand the the mental, the, the mental to reach your own straws. Oh, yeah, I'm mean, helping everybody else, but I can't help I'm encouraging myself. everybody. Else. Jesus, but I, I can't was, do nothing for me. I was just there again. <laughs> Two, three weeks ago, I was just there again. And it's the most difficult thing to explain. She kept asking me what it is, and I just kept saying, I can't. I, I can't put it to words. Because when you try to tell people, they say, you? Why are you going? Because you always can help other people. You can't explain what it's like when you can't help yourself. Yeah. You cannot help yourself. And she said something to me. I done told a thousand people, including the podcast. <laughs> she said, you're always there for other people. This time, do not show, shoulder this one by yourself. Please let us help you. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I didn't know how to let anybody else help. Because I had reached out and reached yeah. out. And you know, when you reach and people don't reach back or they don't help, you stop asking because that's one more yeah. blow you can't take. Yeah. yeah, when is that last one that's going to be <clears throat> And I thought this was going to be it. I'm like, well, my boys are grown now, so they don't need me like this no more. Mm -hmm. And it was a fight, so I understood. Stand so much, and I wish I could have been there in your in your life during that time. We had the rift of that, but I know you had to go through that. But I so get what that's like. Mm -hmm. It is the most loneliest, heaviest place yeah. ever. Yeah. And then when you're helping people, you feel like I'm an imposter. That's what I did. Oh my God! Yes. yes. I'm telling you, smile. Yes. 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 And I'm dealing with this internally, and yes. I want people to know. Yeah. You know? I didn't want people to know. So it's those, embarrassing. We're life coaches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so those famous people that you hear making the world laugh, but then you they commit suicide. Them. I totally got it. Yeah. I totally got it. But they're not, it's not a sad podcast. No. Not. <laughs> <laughs> but but I will tell you. So I needed an intervention. So you see why I needed an intervention? All this baggage, all this. So I'm fussing. I just want to teach her again. I don't want to give away too much of the story, but when you read it, it'll take on a life of its own. You right. your own nuggets, but I'm fussing to God, and I mean, I'm crying. Just uh, it just crying so much. I, you know, He can only hear those things that are coming from my heart because yeah. my lips can't say it. Yeah. Here's the thing: so y'all already caught on to it because He took me back. I ain't gonna tell you everything He told me, but this is the one. He said, "Remember." When you did it, all of that stuff needs to be a position. He said, you thought it was going to work out this way. He said, but in essence, you are a position. See, so y'all already got it. You are. He said, you're chasing after stages. You're chasing after fame, after notoriety. And you want people to know your name, but for the wrong reasons. He said, every time you walk into that classroom, that's the stage I have given you. Oof. Every time. You sit there and tell a baby what they can do and how much you love them. Because every day the kids that leave my class without hearing, I love you. Now I hear with them because I want them to, you know, know the right way and go the right way. I don't want their parents to have to see them and jam my dad. Yes. So, you know, Miss Carter would get them, but they knew it was from love. And so I tell them that. He said, every time you speak that, you be in that heart surgery. 
Mm. You're being that brain surgeon because some of them don't even get yes. it at all. So why are you still fighting me when I destined you? I called you to do this. Yes. You wanted the world, <laughs> the building, and the uh, and the size and things, but I want you to do it for kids. Yes. So when he told me that, that was the most the, the most beautiful thing I had ever heard. Mm -hmm. Because I said, and then I felt ashamed. Because I said, God, I've been fighting and kicking you. And all you've been helping me do is win. Mm -hmm. Everybody saw it but me. Everybody can see but me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like these blinders were on my eyes and people are just pushing me to next levels, getting me, helping me get masters and stuff. I didn't sign up for all this stuff, but God was just pushing and blowing on what I was doing. So then, okay, so then I start saying, okay, God, I see what you're trying to say. But see, they, by this time, layers of masks are still layers. Yeah. Yeah. layers. So I'm showing up and I'm trying to be authentic. I don't know how to be that anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he had to sit me down again. He said, what did I say you were? Because you've taken on what these other people say. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. And I'm sorry. I hope I'm answering your question. You have, you have been, and and he, he put a mark on me. And, it's, and he told me how people would identify me, even though I felt like people, I felt like the, the ugliest. And people don't believe that. They're like, ah, she's just saying it. No, no, no. If you could have saw what was going on in the inside, I felt like the ugliest thing. But when I show up places where he had given people words to say, they say, hey, beautiful. It was sad. And they didn't know how much they were building up my spirit. Because it ain't about this. Yes. It was about this heart posture yes. and the work that he needed me to do. Yes. And he needed them, my ears, to hear them say beautiful so he could take my mind back to remember what I that's it. And what I said, people would see you as and not what you see yourself as. So it, it, all that to say, it's been a journey. And every day is not, every day I don't feel like I'm on the mountain. Mm -hmm. Some days I still struggle with this imposter. I show up thinking I'm not enough. Yes. I show up thinking I need one more class to yes. be able to tell you and help you do right. something. But Honey, I've gone through a lifetime of, of this struggle and pain, yeah. so I, I have I have receipts to show yeah. that I can help you with something. Now I may not be all the way where the next person is, but I've gone through something, and he says that is what I need you to use. Stop mm -hmm. hiding in the cave. Yes. See, imposter syndrome tells me I'm not good enough to hide in the cave, and like I'm sharing with you this morning, mm -hmm. I don't want to put myself out there by myself. Yeah. Us is okay because yeah. they hate all of us. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. me standing on that stage doing something, but God is like, it's time. It's time. Get in. It's time. I've proven to you. You put the fleece out and it was wet and the ground was dry. You put it out again and the ground was uh, wet, uh, wet and the fleece was dry. I was if I'm not saying it right. It's time, Moses. I told you what I need you to do, and I need you to stop giving me excuses. Aaron is not going to be there. Mm -hmm. It's time for you to step out. Mm -hmm. And so that's how this project here was birthed. I got a question. Yeah, what is your question? <laughs> what is your question? <laughs> you had so much, so much. It's, it's beautiful. Like like you said, the mask that you wear <clears throat> is kind of worn so beautiful. Who, who knows what's behind that mask, mm -hmm. right? Um, I want to ask you this question. I was asking God, please give me a question. I saw no answer. Um, how does it feel to be accepting, carrying, walking, and seeing the manifestations of your God given destiny? That's a good question. When I look at it and when I am not in this woe is me because sometimes that spirit still creeps up yes. because yes. that plan you still see you see yeah. it mm -hmm. and it's hard to let it go oh, yeah. it's like if y'all looked on facebook with the little girl is holding on to the little yeah. and yeah. jesus has this great yeah. one and he's like but, no, but i want to hold on to yeah. this one when i let it go in those moments that i am and when i realize what he's doing it's it's a free spirit it, it's it's almost like i've broken from a prison I'm no longer chained and bound. Amen. I'm authentically free to be me. Yes. It's all. But then it's like, what, but what keeps pulling me back? 
What keeps pulling me back to thinking that the mask is more beautiful than that? It, it, is it that you don't have the validation of men or the way you think you would have it? Is it that you're looking in the wrong place, looking for from the wrong people? Because there are people over there who have been cheering you on it all the time. Right. But why was their cheer not enough? Mm. What is it you're so I have these conversations? And he's like, God, God's like, well, is it that you never put me in the way? You just started getting your little pad out and writing what you want to get out of your children. So all of that. But when I put all of that to the side, it's the most freeing spirit, freeing thing ever. Even now when I talk about it, it's like a burden is lifted off of me. Because if you ever seen the man in the iron mask, that's what it feels like wearing mm -hmm. his mask. Yeah. That's what it feels like. You get tired of performing. Mm -hmm. You do. I love theater. I love theater and acting and, and being, be, I felt free as there because you expect me to be somebody else. Right, yeah. right. You paid to see me be somebody else. Yeah. But what do you do when that follows you home? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You live it out every day. Every day. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, Carla, starting with you, why did you ask her that question? How do you feel with her answer? Because you, what she's been saying from the start has been ministering to you in this episode and like none other mm -hmm. so what is it doing in you put words to that oh um, and then i'm gonna ask you the same thing i i want to say um i see a lot of people wear masks mm -hmm. and um i see the potential that they could have if they just accepted christ right and really walk in the boldness of the love of jesus right and so when you were talking, I was like, I know someone, I know someone, I've been that person. I know somebody else did it. I've been that person. Like everything you kept saying, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Um, you think society, trauma, history, past things, whatever you want to call it, makes us create this identity for ourselves that will allow us to stand on the pedestal of greatness. Hmm. But, we shouldn't be on a pedestal. We should be a servant to Christ, right? So that's a different posture than da -da -da, it's more of how am I to serve you? And um, your answer of freedom in Christ uh, and your your God given destiny, um, once you are have a servant heart and your heart posture has changed, mm -hmm. you serve from a different perspective. People keep asking me, so what's the next five years gonna be like? See? I have no idea, and I'm happy about it. I would never say that five years ago. I would be very depressed right now. But the fact that I can say that boldly and be like, I don't know, whatever God has to I'm just like, let me know, Lord, what I'm stepping into, all right? We do this today? Okay, we do this today. You know, like, it's almost like, um, <laughs> dream I had. <laughs> like an adventure, like, okay, let's get it. Oh, we gotta fight battles this time. Okay, we gotta fight here. Okay, we gotta roar up here this way. Okay, let's roar up here. So it's like my my identity now is completely different because of what I have accepted from God's presence and the love, the embrace, and it is freeing. Like you don't have to hold so tight to culture standard and their identity for you or what people might think of you. As long as God is like, go ahead, yup, on your knees, for uh huh. I like that. I, give me all that God. I, I'd, rather, I'd rather get a hand clap from God than a hand clap from people at this point. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can go on and on and on, but like, these are going to be forever. But yeah, like, I was just like, oh my God. Yeah. Not like how you put that in adventure. Because you don't know what, what your next assignment is going to be. But I feel like when you look at it and when you approach it the way, that you are, you, you can't have no choice but to win. Because it's like, you don't set those limitations, those expectations on yourself, and that is a very, okay, what are we gonna do today, guys? Let's see how this gonna roll. And you know, and it doesn't, and see, I had to learn to redefine success. Right. Redefine success. Because if you, hey, when I get the letters and when I see the kids come back and they say, Miss Carter, do you remember some of the things I don't remember? Let's <laughs> talk about that little screen. Yes, I remember those things. But some I don't. But the fact that you remember it right. and that it changed your life. Success. Yes. <laughs> Success. You know, the fact that kids are like, you instrumental in me not committing suicide. Success. Mm -hmm. 
And I was like, that's for me. <laughs> Come on, Coach. The Carter. fact that she wanted to be a heart surgeon <laughs> and you are a spiritual heart mm-hmm. surgeon. Yeah. You have saved generations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not just one life for this amount of time. You saved generations. When you were saying that, I just saw one kid. All those people. One kid. All those people. I'm just like, God, that's a lot. <laughs> and you connected to those people. Yes. That one child. Yes. It's like, and then you'll never see Coach Carter. You're never. 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 Yeah. They know. It's just like, it's just, it's, a, it's way more than. Not belittling or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It's just a God thing. Please, please, y'all don't make it seem like it's not heart. Uh, being a heart surgeon is top notch. We already know that mm-hmm. in world standard. Mm-hmm. But when you have the opportunity to touch people in ways that you could never imagine, uh, without I'm not gonna say without someone telling me about heartache, it, it it just allows you to be like, whoa, God, like yeah, okay, I do. I don't like it, but I'm doing it. You know, okay, oh, that's what that, okay, you see, and you were saying something about, um, I don't see it, I don't see it the way other people see it, because if you did, you would glorify it, and you would be back where you right. were, mm-hmm. yeah. so you can't, you can't, yeah. you're not going to let you see it all, yeah. <laughs> he has to keep it like this, like, I like it, I like it, yeah, okay, I, I, see, I see it, I see it, okay, I see you guys, okay, and you saw all of it, you're like, he don't want you for the hug. Yeah, he knows I, I want that control. Yes. <laughs> I want that control. Yes. I want to be in charge so I can feel like. And he's like, no, no, no. I got this. I got this. Remember the hand of broken? So you'll trust <laughs> me. Totally. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> tell, them, tell them the lyrics on that part. So the lyrics to Broken are uh, brokenness bring up, mm-hmm. brings you to my heart and your sadness to your knees. That's exactly where I need you to be. So you trust in me, trust in me totally. And he talks about how he sees you hurting and crying. And it's like, I start out, God, can you hear me? Are you even there? Do you even care about what I'm going through? But some things, just like a parent, all those parents know when the baby gets a baby and get crawling around and stuff and it falls. So our first yeah. instinct is immediately go yeah. and pick him up and make sure, and that sometimes that's, that's necessary. Well, when it falls again and you sit there and you look, the baby's gonna look at you and see what's happening. Eventually, he'll stand up. He'll try on his own, but if we run over there every time, he'll never get up. He's stuck his world. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's the parent's mm-hmm. mindset. If I jump up and I react, that's the first mm-hmm. thing you're gonna react. So yes. that's why God ain't gonna react sometimes. When we panicking, honey, I done cried and yelled. Man, and listen. Cried. I'm right here. You still panicking, mm-hmm. but I am still right here. Mm-hmm. When we calm down, like the babies, the babies be like, because you ain't gonna get up doing nothing. We're gonna get up. Mm-hmm. We're gonna get up. Eventually, it's not that we say, like, well, God, you do it. We're gonna do it. It's you get in his stillness with him. Because sometimes you got to get there. We are literally just like this. God, if you don't do it right now, even when I was having those talks, I was having a couple weeks ago. All right. I, I, God, God, I need you to move in today. And like, if you don't come in right now, okay, well, I'll find that I worship a little bit longer. Okay, then I'll pray a little bit harder. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> okay. It's always something I got to learn in this. Because it's never, it's never just for you. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely never just for you. Mm-hmm. And you could come out of the worst thing ever, and he'll send you right on to somebody that needs to hear just what it was. And then you'd be like, that's what I went through that for. Mm-hmm. Thank you. If it was just for Carla, or if it was for Carla and her family, or if it was for whoever. Yeah. But it's when you get to that still place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that reminds me of when I was in Splash Town. I don't know how to swim. <laughs> but I decided to be brave and get my little happy self on one of those little rafts that go down the side and bring up in the water. So I was on there with the friend. And, it wasn't <laughs> and I said, we, we made a pact. Whatever you do, when we hit the bottom, you not get off the rap. You got it? You got it. So we go down. And, uh, and I'm terrified. What did we do when we hit the water? She got off the rap. And I turned over. And I'm like, ah, 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 ah. And the lifeguard is right there. And he's like, stand up. Would you just stand up? Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. You just stand up. <laughs> Greater than 
what you see him. Mm. Maybe you need to see him as a lifeguard, so keep acting like you're drowning. And at the first moment, just how lifeguard said it, stand up. And you stand up like this. <laughs> Lord, you a lifesaver. But then you're not just a lifesaver, you real patient. Because I was yeah, tripping. Right. I was like, you yeah. really tripping. Because yeah. yeah. I done gone through about 12 times the last time. Like, I'm done with you. Like, I want to keep there. Yeah. I don't like you. You ain't just nice to everybody to say you uh, are. Girl, God, God is the most strategic, <laughs> chess playing, book writing. He is better than a little white lady on murder she wrote. When I tell yeah. you, the way he does stuff. Yeah. So what's your answer to the question? What have you gotten from, well, from the question that she asked right? and, and your response to it? Yeah. It wasn't really C's question. It was more so what you've been saying this whole time. So you started talking about you looking up your name and what it means. So I looked my name up, I think it was last year or the year before that, and it means free woman. Oh, and what? Yeah, and my word for this year is freedom. But I, did, I never knew what freedom really meant until wow. this year. Mm -hmm. So I always thought it was like going on trips and going to have fun. And I was like, oh girl, I'm about to be free this year. I'm gonna be <laughs> yeah. on the road, I'm gonna yeah. be on <laughs> But it wasn't that. Like God surprised me in such a way because I lost my identity when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So I've had on masks since then. So mm -hmm. all of that iron mask, yeah. I have on I, about 10 of them, 10, 20 of them. Um, and I've never known who I am. Mm -hmm. I've only known what I pretended to be to cover up what was going on in the house, right? Mm -hmm. So now, like, God has me almost like a, I think C was trying to tell me, like, God has rewritten my whole story or however mm -hmm. you said it. So I'm getting to know myself for the first time. Oh, okay. And it's like everything that I'm going through, I'm just like, God, I didn't know that about myself. Wow, I didn't know that about myself. So as you're talking, I relate to it so much, and I'm sitting here thinking, like, God, at what point did I get to this person where it was like, okay, be this person instead? Mm -hmm. And I love me so much. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. I'm sorry. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm sorry. Um, like I am. Um... <laughs> this episode, I just grabbed the whole other time. I grabbed the whole break. Like, there's just so much stuff for me to think about because I have four sons. Jesus. And during that whole process, I had on a mask. Yes. I was married. I had on a mask. Mm -hmm. I've been a daughter, a sister, a aunt, a friend. I had on a mask. Mm -hmm. um, I was married like 17, 18 years ago. And he left and he just recently came back in my life. And in this process, God is showing me who I am. So I just, the goodness of God and how he, I think we talked about it the last episode, how he gives us a relationship all over again. And I know we were talking about friendship, but I'm like, God, you are taking me through a process where you gave me this back, Ooh, but you're also giving me myself. Yes. Ooh. And he always restored more than what was taken. Always. Yes. Always. always. <laughs> Always. And I am a woman. I'm a woman of few words, especially around people. But this year, God has been telling me, daughter, it's time. It's time to speak. Mm -hmm. And I lost my voice so long ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like God has been, like she said, you can't see everything. So God has been giving me those glimpses of me talking. And it's almost like I'm scared of it because I don't want to. Um, People are so used to seeing me one way. Right. And I'm like, God, I'm even scared of that voice that you put in. Mm. So I'm so like, when I tell y'all these episodes, yes, Lord. I'm so inspired. So when I say I can sit here and I listen to y'all, it's not because I don't hear myself, but I can see God speaking to me through each one of y'all. Like he was just talking like, you belong in this room. Jesus! You have a voice. Jesus! And I'm just overwhelmed. I'm like, God, you can't choose in me. Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! Mm. And I'm Jesus. so thankful. And I'm thankful and I'm really sitting still because I want, I just want to hear him. I want to hear him. Um, I want to hear him through y'all, I want to hear him through me, but I also don't want to miss anything. 
because of what he's taken me through this year. So everything, I'm just like trying to grab it. Like, give me that relationship. <laughs> what can I do with it? Show me who I am. Show me this door. Show me. <clears throat> and I'm just, mm. wow. Mm. Yeah, so that's all that sound you hear. Like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I will say, when he shows you, believe him. Yes. Believe him. Because that's one of the biggest things with this mask. It's like, he said, you are the head. God, I've been so comfortable being the yeah. tail, being the side. Yeah. You are above. But I've been so, I'm used to being the enemy. So you got to believe him and you got to start. And when I'm saying that to you, I'm hearing it in my own. You're speaking it. Because the stillness, so what I call on was the stillness. And if I may share this one <clears throat> last piece that blew my mind of this story. So when I got quiet, so I'm sitting there having this pity party talking to God and he's talking back to me. But when I got quiet, and in my studies with writing this, he said, go look up Kintsu. I said, what? I don't even know how to say that. I don't know what that is. I don't even know how to spell it. <laughs> so he's like, you go look it up. So I looked it up. Kintsugi is the Japanese art form of repairing and mending broken things. Yes, it is. I said, okay, where are you going with this guy? So I start reading it and I start looking into it. I shared a little bit on the last episode. And he said, now when you take the mask off, you have these scars. You don't want to take the mask off because you don't want the world to see the scars of pain, rejection, fear, doubt, whatever it may be. Low self esteem. Stop and get down. You don't want them to see that. But come back to the potter's house. Let me put you back on my wheel. When I do, I'm going to do what they do with this Japanese art form. Where they fill it. And I mentioned this on the last, on the last uh, episode. Where they fill it with the lacquer and fill it with the finest of materials, <laughs> the finest of precious metal. Gold, uh, uh, silver, or what's the other one? My last platinum. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you. Or platinum. He said, and when I do, when I restore what's been lost to you and fill those things with my presence and with who I am and who I see, you go out and you show yourself to the world because now you're more valuable. See, the story behind this whole Kintsugi, there was a rich emperor, a ruler, and he bought a guest into his home. And he said, and he had a base for him, and it was a nice base, but when the guest came, he didn't pay attention to the base. He was looking out the window and admiring other things. So when the man left, the base broke. And then when, it, when the man came back, and so King told his people, repair this. And he didn't like the way they did it at first, and then they went back and put the gold in there. And so he's like, okay, cool. He put it up on the shelf. When the guests came back, all he could do was admire. Admire that once broken vessel that now had this, this rich element in it. And he said, now this is armor. Now there's a story behind it. This is a great value. So I said, God, <laughs> so I had a crime party right there because God just broke me. He said, now it makes sense why I have you call your, your, and see, I can't, I can't even say it, your company or your ministry divine purpose. Now it makes sense why your CD was called Broken but Perfected for My Purpose. Now it makes sense that you're in an anthology when destiny needs an intervention. Put the pieces together and see how I worked in all of that. <coughs> so let me, let, me, let, me throw this picture, let me throw this picture out there. There is so much more beauty in broken and in brokenness. Mm. And there is so much more beauty in God's taking your broken pieces and parts and putting them back together. Mm -hmm. Because when he is filling in the voids and he's healing the pains and he's now becoming the, 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 the bomb to the rejection, he's becoming the bomb to the sexual abuse, he's becoming all of that, you are so much, much more colored. Mm -hmm. You're not just one solid black. You got flecks of this and flecks of that in there. When he's coming and he's healed, and the beauty of that is you can take that and share the story of it. I want to ask y'all this question. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm let God do what he's doing. And let me tell y'all something. Y'all so used to us crying on here. <laughs> but y'all don't understand. We fasted. Yes. We fasted for season three. And we prayed. 
We didn't, we didn't, we, just the challenges of them getting here without GPS taking them to Chupacabra country, <laughs> getting them lost to the two hours it took for us to try to get just these cameras and stuff going because these things have to be said and taken place. If y'all don't get your healing and you don't get what you need, we're getting it. Yes. But my prayer, and I know he is, is that you are getting yours. So even if you're talking about us right now, we always crying. You're going to still get what God got for you if you allow it and you apply it. So to God be the glory. So I'm, I'm going to leave you in that God moment right now. Mm-hmm. Here's the question. Mm-hmm. Off of what I just said about the broken and steel beauty. Mm-hmm. Why do y'all think we think the mask is so much more beautiful? That the mask is so better than our raw us? Oh, you good? Society and culture has taught us that the mask is more beautiful than our broken pieces. And that everything perfect looks like it hasn't been harmed, looks like it hasn't had any anything done to it. If you think about anything like the perfect apple or the perfect person or um is oh I could go. I saw that, I saw that. But anyway, anything that you think of that's perfect, they can even throw away apples that don't look perfect or they don't have a perfect shape or colorization. And I like apples that don't have perfect green or the perfect red. Um, <laughs> I mean, they say sweeter to me, anywho. Um, but yeah, it's society, culture has taught us to to be perfect, but there's no perfection. Like, there's not, there's, that doesn't exist. We all have different stories. Mm-hmm. How can any of us be perfect or be what society expects us to be? Um, so therefore we hide and mask all of the things that we have been through. And we don't show up as what we've been through, we show up as the mask right. and hide everything else. When actually, if we really showed up authentically who we were or wherever we are in life, um, killing can be happening within yourself and within others. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I just feel very heavy because uh, there's so much in everything that you just said. And as you were talking, God was like, I feel like God speaking through you as you were speaking. Yes. And it was just like, you hear her? I think it's also a generational grooming. Oh, yeah. Um, That's what I was trying to coach you with. Yeah. I didn't know if that was the right (laughs) thing. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. it. But I know in my family, we're taught to have on masks. Like all the women, most of the women are like single mothers. Uh, working extra hard, not showing you right, not showing our tears or our struggle or mm-hmm. asking for help. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, if I show this, then I get beat up for showing it, or someone saying I'm too weak, or mm-hmm. you need to be strong. So I think a lot of that happens as well, not just society, but also within the family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why do you, Why do you think we think the mask is more beautiful than the book is? I think sometimes we get to, we feel like, we feel like we get to control the narrative of the mask. Mm. And we feel like that at the end of wearing this and being in positions for where people want, society want us, we'll get that validation that you are enough. Mm-hmm. Or you, and, and I think that we feel like those things. We have a false sense of security. It's like liners. And our own peanuts and whatever they will show what you never want to leave without that little blanket. Mm-hmm. It was a security blanket. Because if I show you the real me, then you reject me. Or you don't you say it's not enough and you don't want it. Mm-hmm. What will that do to an already broken person? Mm-hmm. Right. <clears throat> you know? And so I feel like well, it's better for me to be what you need me to be. I'm showing up with the super cape on, and mm-hmm. I found out how did it manifest? Somebody asked that. A great question, podcasters. Through perfectionism, mm-hmm. through superhero, mm-hmm. superwoman complex, want to be everywhere for everybody. Mm-hmm. And, and then when you look around in, in the scheme of things, when it's your turn, where are those people? 
Yes. You run yourself into the ground for them, you know, and, and so it just shows up in all these ways. And it's just heavy weights to carry. Heavy weights to carry. It's also why some people are addicted to certain things. Mm -hmm. And not only are some addictions due to having coping mechanisms, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's, it's where he used to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where he used to. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They yeah. were the most known people that would ever walk the face of this earth. People in other countries that couldn't speak English could speak every word. Yeah, 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 yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. However, and but they could never be Michael and they could never be mm -hmm. Nippy. Could never be. Yeah. Could yeah. never be. And to be the performer and to be what y'all want mm -hmm. me to be in this whole team, everybody that I support. Yeah. They chose coping mm -hmm. mechanism. Mm -hmm. They chose things to help them to cope. Mm -hmm. Michael, it was so bad he couldn't even sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Both and both of those things took them out of this earth. Mm -hmm. I don't know what their last moments were like, but there have been times when I wondered what it was that either one of them were thinking about when yes. they were maybe taking that last hit, maybe taking that last pill, maybe just saying, I just need to sleep. But I've seen interviews where they talk, and a lot of the times they were saying it, and nobody oh paid attention. Yes. Yeah. You didn't hear the words behind what they were saying. Yes. But when Michael would talk about the gruel of touring, mm -hmm. they literally told him one time, don't say that. Don't don't say that. He was that. like, but it's the truth. He was, they were like, but don't say that. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't. Put, matter of fact, put your mask back on. Mask for me. Yeah. I need you to say you enjoy this, but I don't enjoy mm -hmm. this. But I need you to say that you do. Mm -hmm. So I think my answer to the question would be acceptance. Mm -hmm. You're not going to accept me in my in my truth. Mm -hmm. And probably because I don't accept myself in my truth. Mm -hmm. there you go. So I just there you automatically go. assume you're not going to accept me in my mm -hmm. truth. I'll never forget. I'll never forget when I first had to start using it. A wheelchair. I had to accept I couldn't ballet dance anymore. I had to accept a lot of change. Mm -hmm. The acceptance was not so much as me accepting this. It was, what are people going to think? Mm -hmm. I ain't never had this before. Mm -hmm. Is this still going to make me look like? And then I was like, as a woman, like, what does that? Am I still sexy? Mm -hmm. Am I going to be desirable? Somebody going to want me? Mm -hmm. Worried about the acceptance because I didn't accept this, so I didn't think somebody else would. Mm -hmm. The moment I accepted it, and I care less what anybody else thought, my whole life changed. Everything changed. Because now, if you're with me, what most of my friends say, girl, I'll be forgetting about that chair. Right. I'll be forgetting it. Because you see me, you accept yeah, me. Yeah. And those who cannot, I'm okay with it because mm -hmm. I accept me. So I think when we get to places where we accept ourselves yeah. in every frailty, every, every stretch yeah. mark, every whatever, yeah. your fupa, your flat booty, yeah. your big yeah. booty, your whatever, when we accept yeah. even those parts of us that are so shameful, we ain't talking about it about. Yeah. Like when that man, that uncle, that next door neighbor, that mama's boyfriend, that mama's sister, yeah. that mama's auntie, whoever touched us in ways they shouldn't have. When 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 we accept that yes they walked away from my life like when we accept these wrinkles or these imperfections or whatever we want to call them when we accept them mm -hmm. it's not gonna wearing the mask won't even be desirable anymore mm -hmm. I don't desire to not be myself I don't desire to be masked anymore right. I'm ready to stand bold foot and naked how many of y'all have seen um um have seen Twilight. Mm -hmm. we'll be so there's a point when Edward wants to reveal him his true self mm -hmm. to Bella, and he's afraid to do it because he thinks she's going to see this hideous monster, and to reveal himself, he has to go stand in sunlight. But when the light hits him, all you see is like gold. It's like gold specks. He's ashamed as he stands there. He's got Jesus' revelation. As he is standing there revealing himself, you can see the agony in it like he's waiting. Meanwhile, you're looking at the screen like, if I can twinkle with that, <laughs> let me get somebody else to go with <laughs> And she said, let me see some sparks like that everywhere I go. She says, you're beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he could not see his beauty for seeing what he thought was imperfect. Mm -hmm. And that is how we are with these masks. Mm -hmm. And I'm so terrified if I just tell, let, let Carla see that I'm really insecure, mm -hmm. she's not going to want to be my friend. Yeah. Instead of me just saying, I do what it's she might be like, girl, I do too. What, what you do for yours? Because we didn't get together and pray about that. Right. Because we're so afraid. Mm -hmm. We as life coach, we just said earlier, it's hard to tell people what you go through, but yet you got to give a word to them. As a minister, I, I would, anytime I go to Mr. Word, I'd be like, y'all ain't know what I would do this week to bring this word because I got to be honest. 
Otherwise, I'm afraid to be who I am. That word can't come forth right. It can't. Jesus, best mask taker on forever. Yeah. He, when he yeah. was in the garden, yeah. when he asked his friends yeah. to pray, this is Jesus. Why you need your friends yeah. to pray for you? Right. And he come out like, y'all couldn't pray for two, three, right. really? Jesus unmasking himself. Jesus unmasking himself all the way to the cross. Yes. So I hope that from what we've said so far and what we'll continue to go for, because um, we got a couple more questions for you for sure about, about your chapter, <laughs> that it is helping people drop these masks. However many you got, you got to keep peeling them off. Mm. However many it is, you might have to peel off a mask every single day. Yes. But be intentional and choose to. It's a choice. It's a choice. It is yeah. an absolute choice. Yeah. You got something to say? No, 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 no. no. Go ahead. Oh, oh, maybe I did it right here. Maybe I did it right here. Don't lose your mind. Okay. 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 I already gave you the book title and all that. The group that we used to sing in. I was going to bring that up. It was called uh, Unmasked. Get out of the front, don't Seriously? You're too hot. Stop. We had so we would go around singing. I think everywhere. When I say everywhere, Jay, we don't been everywhere, everywhere. singing. And one day we were we were just all together, me, her, and, and, and another friend. And it was like it's time to really make this thing like legit. We were singing on people's CDs. We were Jesus. We did a jingle. We can't say for who. We wrote, we wrote a jingle for a very famous person organization. Um, and so it was like, so what are we going to call it? And at that time, we were all walking your book, my book, and everything we've been talking about. We were walking it out and like going through. A couple of us was homeless. We was going through some things. And one of the biggest things we dealt with is how people viewed us. How they viewed us, we would get up there on that stage, and how they would look at things that they was, it was just a lot. And God gave us the name Unmasked. <laughs> yeah. And that is that is what we stood in when we sang and when we did anything for a long time. And to see you walking this out as part of your ministry, it's part of my ministry. It's all over the website, is what I talk to my clients about. We talk to, this is walking out. That, but we had to be very masked, and even though we still are unmasking some things, mm -hmm. we had to be that. And he still called us unmasked, though, while we were still masked. Mm -hmm. But we, I'm a hush. Yeah, yeah. we didn't see it. I'm a he hush. Called us what he knew yeah. he had designed. Yes, he did. What he knew he had given us the identity, even though we didn't see it. <laughs> I'm telling you, we can't do that. That was the name like, of our group. That was the name of our group. <laughs> Capital U, lowercase, in capital, M-A-F-K-A-D. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. My God. What in the world? One of the first ministries we worked in together outside of us was mm -hmm. we had a masquerade ball with that ministry. It was like, I, I, I can't do not. I can't do not. I can't do not. Okay, so. Woo! We don't, we don't, we don't get back to Jack in this book. Let, let, ladies, let's talk about losing your identity. Mm -hmm. Can you recall the first time that you wrongfully identified yourself? Ha! Huh? The first time you were come through, Holy Spirit! The first time you were victim of stolen identity. Oh, oh, my God. God. Oh, my God. Come through, Holy Spirit! I thought that was gonna be the name of my second oh, book too, by the way. But can y'all can y'all identify the first time you found out you realized that you were a victim of stolen identity? Now you mean identity theft? Identity theft. Someone, identity someone, theft. someone thought of you as you were not, or when 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 you agreed to it. So somebody had already stolen it by either them calling you something with a word curse, or maybe something happened to you that made you start seeing yourself differently. But it's when we come into agreement with that that it becomes our identity. Oh. Wrongfully, but it's ours. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, that's not hard. If y'all thinking I got mine. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying. The first time I was raped and molested. And I called it rape because when you were inserting my body with your penis and I didn't give you permission because I'm like under four, right. that's that's rape. But that was that was the first time because I remember and I know you read it because I wrote a book. I remember laying there and I remember thinking, so okay. This is what I'm here for. And when it kept happening repeatedly, I actually identified and agreed with, okay, that's I'm, I'm, I'm here for hurt. I am here for hurt. The pleasure of men is to hurt me. And I was here for that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I literally began to identify that that was just the beginning. That was just the beginning. That was my first time laying there and literally asking God because this didn't make sense about the God like at Sunday school. It didn't make no sense like why he would let it happen. So mm -hmm. I did something wrong. Couldn't tell what it was, but I had to have done something wrong. Mm -hmm. So when things happen, it's my fault. When something hurts or somebody does something, it's my fault. I even still deal with apologizing over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. I did that to y'all. I don't know how many times that you catch it. Yeah. I was like, oh, I've got to tell you, I got one minute to yeah. so my bad, I'm sorry. And I caught myself the fifth time, I was like, Nikki, they didn't know it was in there, so why are you apologize? You didn't do it intentionally hurt them. Mm -hmm. And I remember why, because I'm at a place of identifying those groups now. Mm -hmm. yeah. But mm -hmm. that would be the first time that I realized I was a victim of stolen identity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think mine can stem from a story that I was told. I don't even remember it. <laughs> I was a youngster, and it was my birthday party. And um, I think my mom had invited people. And from the way I remember the story, nobody came. From that moment, I remembered that I would be rejected. No matter what shiny things I would put out, I accepted the fact that I was not wanted. I would be rejected. I would have to do extra things and try to buy friendships and buy love and buy mm -hmm. people's acceptance. And so it manifests. Now, you're talking about your over-apologies to people. Mine manifests in making sure every like putting my voice at the back burner just to make sure everybody else is heard. Mm -hmm. So everybody knows that they are seen right. and acknowledged right. in my presence. Yeah. So that's how, how mine manifests. And I went through life like that, expecting mm -hmm. to be rejected. People say, well, why didn't you tell me you were going to be on the podcast? Why weren't you telling me you're in this? I let people wait and find out. Yeah, so come, come on. Because I done got over you and gone How many times? Be like, Jackie. Well, <laughs> Because if I tell you and you don't show up, it takes me back to that birthday yeah. party. It yeah. reopens those wounds. Yeah. And so, again, before I let you hurt me, mm -hmm. I'll just, I won't have that disappointment mm -hmm. there. Wow. I'll just let you find out. Yeah. Wow. So, remember one of your first interviews when the anthology was coming out? And I was like, Jack, why is blind? Da, 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 da. But he saw some stuff you want. And I showed up. He was like, thank you. And I was like, why wouldn't I show up? But I get it. Mm -hmm. It's like, girl, please, because if y'all don't show, I ain't hurt. Yeah. I don't say nothing, you don't show up, I'm yeah. not hurt. But I was like, why? Absolutely. But I get it. Yeah. Even with play, even with performing and plays and oh, things, God. I don't want to come out after Because if they're, I, I see all the other ones with their loved ones yeah. and things, I don't want to come out after it. I'm giving you my heart on the stage, but I don't want to come out because I don't expect that there will be anybody there to say anything. Jesus. About what I pour. Yeah, right. Jesus. Oh God! But the flip part is, but you won't say nothing, so nobody will know. <laughs> right. Right. So it's like, yeah. so I read it. Yeah. 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 We got to read it. I want to read it. I can't get it. I read it. But if I tell you, I'm going to show. Yeah. Yeah. And I want your excuses that you couldn't go, so I'm not going to tell you. Right. Right. Well, your relate story is because you about to have church. Yeah. 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 what is it and of course you know a little bit of my past too so my innocence was uh stolen or taken or however you want to put it but that wasn't the thing that came to my mind right away the thing for me was that um the way i love wasn't good enough mm. or it wasn't right mm. um and i got that from the person who molested me because when i was a teenager we had sat it was one of the first times i had ever asked him why did he do what he did and he told me because I loved him. Jesus, yeah. wow. That was his reasoning for doing it. And how old were you when he told you that? At that time, I was a teenager, so maybe about 14, 15. That's but he molested lie. me. He started molesting me when I was six. So in my really? head, I'm like, wow. So what kind of love do I get? So my whole life after mm -hmm. that has been, my love has been a little janky. Mm -hmm. um, very Jeez. masculine at some point. Mm -hmm. um, like I cheated on people, I've done all types of things and kind of just left people like this. Yeah. Because then if I see that you're loving me, I'm pushing you off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because I know my love is not, you know, yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Right, so Crazy. now I have this opportunity to change the narrative. Like I do know love, mm -hmm. I saw what love was in the Bible. Mm. So now I can start working towards that kind of love and receiving that kind of love. Yeah. So that's mine. 
And at the age of 14, that's when you're ready to start loving outside of right. you, outside of your ego and like, okay, yeah. I want friends, right. I want to be accepted, mm -hmm. but to be told right there, that's that freaking strategy. Yes. Oh, yes. oh yes. 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 But that's that strategy right there. Mm -hmm. So then you you start making life decisions from that point till your deliverance. Yep. Oh, and that's my God. God. Yeah. My God. Yeah. Ooh. But to God be the glory of <laughs> So mine is unwanted and forgotten. Mm -hmm. um, I'm half Nigerian. My father was not, was not there to raise me. Um, so that part of my life, uh, my mom was a single mother. She masked that he was a great man. He probably was to her at the time. But he was not a part of our lives, mm -hmm. and the fact that he was alive all this all this time and didn't reach out to us, nor did the family reach out to us, um, I felt forgotten. Mm -hmm. So everyone, when I realized that my father never came back, it started since I was in I guess elementary school. He never came back for us. So he never reached out for us. So he never called us. So he never said, "Hey, come to." Nigeria, any of that, I was forgotten mm -hmm. because I you don't communicate <clears throat> to me, so I'm forgotten, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So then I started this, that, that thing, and then so now I also feel unwanted because when I try to embrace my Nigerian side in America, my Nigerian friends, I didn't realize there were different tribes. Mm -hmm. I don't know nothing about Nigerian. Mm -hmm. um, but when I, when I realized my last name is a Nigerian name, oh, that's Nigerian. Okay. So I said, well, let me embrace that side of me by talking to people, be befriending people. But once they figured out that mom was American, mm -hmm. then it was, ugh. Well, uh, so your dad's Nigerian, but your mom's American? Oh, okay. What she was saying? And they completely wow. Unwanted. Wow. So therefore I carried that on um, as a child into adulthood and yada yada yada. Yeah. So uh, every person that I encounter or I allow to get close to me, eventually I'm forgotten and I'm also unwanted. Oh yeah. So and sometimes it shows up and it's not even what's really happening, right. but it shows yes. up like, right. you know, this is me again. Right. So you're like, oh, there you go again. Yeah. And, and, and it turns out upon further investigation right. by way of the Holy Spirit, that ain't what that was. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. not even what that was. Exactly. Wow. Yeah, but yeah. our mind is taught to magnify. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The little things mm -hmm. magnify. And then we start uh, carrying the story on. But yeah. it, it, you're right. Sometimes it may not even be the way mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's not. Sometimes it absolutely is. Thank you, Lord, for the service. Right. Sometimes, Sometimes it, it, it looks like it. That ain't it. Yeah, but it's not it. That looks like pumpkin yeah. pie, but that's sweet potato. Right. But you done told everybody, we got pumpkin up in this mug. Somebody takes it and be like, this is sweet potato pie. Yeah. Is it? That's how it goes down in our minds. Yeah. Here comes rejection again. Yeah. Here comes somebody that ain't going to love me right or tell me my love is wrong, so I'm going to give it to you I want to. Right. That ain't me. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's, I'm sorry, that's not even what I meant. I've never had love. So I didn't know how to take your love. You was like, oh, so you wanted my love? You just didn't know how. Oh, man. How many how many relationships or people or job opportunities? My God. Do y'all think we may have passed on because it looked like something that we thought it was and it wasn't? Mm -hmm. Or it merely triggered and we was like, retreat, 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 retreat. It's a trigger, man. It's a trigger. Not with the regrets, but you can be like, dang, yeah. 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 But you know what? I, I learned from that. Uh -huh. I learned how to not do X, Y, and Z. Well, I learned how to. Because sometimes what we need to do is just take a breath. Right. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath. Matter of fact, I got a question for y'all. Y'all think on your answer. 
Have y'all gotten to the place in life where you've learned, let me not respond right away. Let me wait. <laughs> let me wait. <laughs> and if so, I want to know how that's working out for you. But I think sometimes we just need to take a break. Even if it is exactly what you see, it may not be what you see. It may right. be. It may be very well looking like rejection, right. but that ain't what it is. If you pull back a minute and calm down, like before you go beat your head, because right. they don't want to talk some, but they be bringing you my bitch. Right. By the time you calm down, you don't want to be in the voice like, let me talk to you, find out what were you thinking? Right. And then you find out, oh, that you thought, baby, right. mommy. Right, 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 right. Hey, spent that much time. It's, you yeah. never know. Yeah. Okay, so on to the question. <laughs> Have y'all gotten to the place in life where it's like, well, let me not respond right away. Let me take a moment and really think. Mm -hmm. And how has that been working out for you or not? I would say it's a it's a middle ground for me. Okay. So sometimes some things I'm just immediately going from zero to hundred, right. and then, then I have to, you know, once maybe some damage or is done, and somebody <laughs> heard something, or you know, and it's like I didn't even have to act that way. So now I'm backtracking, bad fell in, apologizing. For unnecessary stuff when I if I would take that moment, because I'm a very emotional, passionate person, if you have any <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you know, then it, it would save me some trouble. So yeah. if I remind myself to do it that way. But see, sometimes you're on autopilot and you've operated out of that place of hurt for so long yeah. that that's what you automatically retreat to mm -hmm. and automatically respond to. Yeah. But yeah. I think the more that you see God and, and when you recognize it, you name it. And you speak it and say, hey, I recognize this is what this is, and you're not going to have me and pray over it, then that helps. But yeah, because yeah. if, if I'm a, I'm a need your person automatically. So That's I, it. I found right. with that, Jack, <laughs> if you my friend, I can tell you, so you know how I be tripping. If I need to trip it, please just you come up with a word together. You can, you can say potato chips. <laughs> I'd be like, damn, I'm tripping. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to front me from everybody for taking right, chips. I'm right. tripping. So I found just, just look, if I get the truth, or you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm zero to 100 again. Just be like, you want zero to 100 right now? I'm tripping. <laughs> yeah, Nikki, you're tripping. <laughs> that really does work. What about you? Um, I'm going to have to agree with you. I, I, I seem quiet, but when I feel like back in the corner, I'm like this. So I have taken that posture of sitting back. Thinking about it first, but if I feel like this, okay. like I keep getting poked, mm -hmm. that's when you see a whole nother. Right, right. I'm like a dungeon dragon. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 It's like a totally different yeah. person. Yeah. Immediately after I feel bad. Right, right. right. Yeah. Like that's right in my face right away. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> it, it does not feel good to hold it in sometimes. It does. It does not, but it, it saves so it, it saves so much pain. Yeah, it, it, does. it really yeah. does. So, yes. Just see. That's where I am. <laughs> so, me and Steve was having a conversation. <laughs> okay, so. That's okay. <laughs> oh, you're dead. You want some cover? Next episode, we'll give you a cover. Yeah. <laughs> so, the situation, you know, had went down or whatever, and I, 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 I can go a long time without talking about something, especially if I'm yeah. trying to process, because I will Me raise too. the love to always win. Mm -hmm. I do not want to react out of first thought. Jesus, it don't be right. right. And you know, I don't mind repenting, but sometimes I be like, Lord, it's me again. Onion. 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 I didn't make five. I be like, but okay. Onion. 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 Onion.
a seed, I bled all over her and she didn't even cut me. I'm grateful for the safe place to live yes. and the safe space to be because I went in. Yeah. And that side, I don't I don't even see often when I see it, I see it. Thank God for Davis and Jonathan and people in your life that say, it's okay, you can bleed on me because I got it. God, I'm yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah. You got some more blood, give it to me, I got it. Because I bled all over this sister, like, and everything. I bled all over her. Um, she got quiet. Yeah. And I, when she got quiet and I said hello, she said, I'm here. Mm-hmm. I, I felt like, <laughs> I felt so bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because she did not cut me, but I bled all over her and I I released so I was I had held it in for a long time. Yeah. And yeah. she said, But Nick, but you've been holding that in and, and you know, working to do other things and not do that. I say, Yeah, but you didn't deserve that. Mm-hmm. That that wasn't about you. Even what I was venting about didn't deserve it, but that's the place that I was in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the first conviction came to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I had to apologize over what she heard me say about the situation because I felt I was releasing so much venom and vinegar and all of that. I don't want to be damaging nor putting in something else, spirit, that don't need to be there. Yeah. Again, that's another heart check moment. Right. I couldn't stop apologizing enough, but at the same time, I was grateful for that very safe place. Because yes. she ain't looked, I don't think she did. Uh, she looked at me, no, she's looked at me no differently and yeah. has, since then, how, how you feeling today? How are things yeah. today? Like, where's your heart today? But then turned around and told me it taught her another level of grace. I was like, well, then thank you, God, for letting me bleed on her. But I was like, I would never do that to you again. She was like, girl, if you need to do it later yes. on, call me. So I, I'm not sure why Holy Spirit has me going this way, but we'll make you need to hear it. But that for me, first of all, thank you again. Thank you again. Because, ooh, Jesus, mm-hmm. you was bloody married that day. I was. I was. But all that we can have safe spaces like that. That, yes, that, that part. Yeah, yes. I think everybody who is listening, if you have not found a safe space, and I mean a physical one outside of Jesus, Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. But you need the relationships. Yes. On that to the other episode, the people, your your inner core, your inner circle. <laughs> because what you even with me in my ministry, I'm that's one thing I fear that I'm gonna bleed on the people because sometimes some topics I can talk through. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, it depends on what day I'm, mm-hmm. I'm right. there. You know, <laughs> some topics you have to hold on for me for a minute. Let me get my little tears out. And then let me take a breath. Now let me try to help you and say something. Yeah. But, you know, there, there's a balance mm-hmm. between, you know, it's almost like when Jesus healed the lepers. Mm-hmm. It wasn't immediate. Mm-hmm. He was like, do you believe you can be healed? Oh, yeah. Well, go show yourself to the people. But the healing took place as they, as they went. Yeah. As they went. Mm-hmm. And so for us with sharing our stories, yeah. sharing our, our experiences, our hurts, our joys, it's for somebody else. Mm-hmm. And so I would say to somebody, and, I, you, and I'm glad you went there, because somebody needs to hear this. Mm-hmm. You may think, you're like me, I'm never ready. Well, guess what? We'll never <laughs> feel like yeah, we're completely ready. ready. Were you guys ready when you started the podcast? Weren't there no. more things you'd like to have in place? Yeah, or no. your business, go, 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 all right. But sometimes, and don't let people make you feel bad if you have to take that first step of birth. The point is, take the steps. Just take it. Because you'll become bolder and bolder the more and more steps you take. That's it. So that's what, so I'm really encouraged that you shared that story. Because that empowered me and it made me think about how important our safe space is all. Mm-hmm. Because God, you know, when you make that uh, discernment and judge who your relationships are and the ones that are important and the ones you keep close, she can handle. Mm-hmm. They can handle. Mm-hmm. And see, God get brought you to a new level up mm-hmm. in your faith, in your grace, by being there for you. So mm-hmm. both of you grew that day. Yeah. So that's why those relationships are so important. But how would we do it if we never we share never the story? It. We never went through it. Mm-hmm. Right. So and let me encourage mm-hmm. you, you keep you 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 keep crying or bleeding as you call it. You keep crying. That's just you showing scars. Mm-hmm. Thomas, you doubting? Let me let me show you the scars. Sometimes you can show those scars. Mm-hmm. What I did on her was bleeding. Because it was a build up of frustration, hurt, and pain, and, and lies, and all kind of things that were happening. And that was just rah, rah, like for real, for real, with cuss words and everything. Mm-hmm. But 
that was the space to do it in. Yes. Now, you up there ministering, <laughs> and right. you come out, you're so down at the church. All right. All right. For the people not bleeding on them, keep showing them your scars. Yes. Your scars are so beautiful. Yes. Your scars are beautiful because yes. when Jackie be opening up and sharing us, stuff, Jackie be like, <laughs> "Okay, God, bam." Because I know it be something he had you share. You be like, "For real?" Okay, God, here we go. It's your thing. So please don't stop. Please don't stop. Please do not stop. Please do. Not stop. Please do not stop.